Okay, students, we're going to do another one of these videos. And this one's actually going to be a little bit different because it's not a sample problem from the back of the book. But it's just kind of a, a quick a tutorial or set of rules that's going to help you with tonight's homework, okay? So um, the section that we're going to deal with in the homework here that's due October 5th at midnight is going to be all about shifts from equilibrium, all right? So there's a series of key concepts or rules. If you're one for rules, um, you'll want to know these rules and how to apply them. If you prefer to use um, Q, the reaction quotient, go ahead and do that because that, that's not going to fail you. So if you're a quantitative person, maybe you want to use Q to predict shifts in equilibrium, and that's fine. It's going to work. But if you rather use the rules and the words, um, this is basically a summary of them. So um, you can use this video. So the whole idea behind this section of the class is, is something called the Chatelier's Principle, which is predicting shifts um, in chemical systems when a real uh, uh, equilibrium state is reestablished, okay? So the whole concept behind this is that we want to consider cases in which we establish an equilibrium inside of a reaction system. So we let the equilibrium establish itself, but we're not happy with that, and we have to make a change. So we change something, some variable, in that equilibrium state, from that equilibrium state, and the chemical system will change as a result, okay? So we change the experiment somehow, and that reaction system generally responds, which basically means just that the concentrations of the reactants or the products may change. We may increase the concentration of the reactants, we may increase the concentration of the products, or, or nothing might happen. Okay, so there's a lot of different possibilities. And there's a series of rules that we can use to predict whether or not the reaction shifts right or shifts left. All right? Now I just used some terminology there, shift right and shift left. If a system shifts to the right, what that means is that we increase the relative concentrations of our products, the things to the right of the arrow. If the system shifts left, what that means is that we're going to increase the amounts of our reactant. So that's what we mean by shift right and shift left. Sometimes that vocabulary is a little bit confusing, but it's just whether or not we're going to make more of the products or, or more of the reactants, okay? So let's look at the rules. So these rules are the ones that we summarized in class. You can use these to complete your homework assignment if you'd like. The first rule, A, is that an equilibrium will shift away from the side with added chemicals. So if you have your equilibrium system, you increase the amount of a certain chemical. The system shifts away from the side where that chemical appears. So if you add more reactants, we'd say it shifts to the right. If you add more products, we'd say it shifts back to the left. Okay, it shifts away from where we add more chemicals. And this is because we increased our concentration, okay? So it, the, the equilibrium has to shift the other direction to maintain a constant K, a constant value K, the constant, right? With that said, then rule B tells us the equilibrium that will shift towards the side with removed chemicals, okay? So if I remove a reactant, just magically remove a reactant from my reaction system, the equilibrium is gonna shift towards the reaction side because I'm going to remove some of um, that material. So that's rule B. Now, if I'm dealing, dealing with gas phase reactions, um, sometimes you may be faced with uh, situations where you add an inert gas to the reaction mix. So you've got a series of gases that react to make gas phase products. If you added inert gas to the mixture, that will increase the total pressure of all gases present because you're adding another gas, okay? so. Of course, you add the partial pressures of all gases together to get the total pressure, so that makes sense, but it turns out that that inert gas, if it doesn't con contribute in the reaction, if it doesn't participate in the reaction, it has absolutely no effect on the equilibrium at all. There, there won't even be a shift. It's just increasing the total pressure, okay? Um, likewise, if you add either a pure liquid solvent or a pure solid to the equilibrium system, that is also going to have no effect. Provided sufficient liquid solvent or pure solid is present in the equilibrium system to allow the establishment of the equilibrium, adding more will have no effect whatsoever. There will be no shift. We see the effect of solids a lot when we're going to talk about solubility equilibria, okay? Adding more solid is not going to change the solubility of that material because as long as enough is present to establish the equilibrium in the first place, adding more does essentially nothing, okay? Rule D, if we're dealing with a gas phase reaction, and these rules are going to be for gas phase reactions, the D and the E, okay? If we're dealing with a 
a gas phase reaction where all of our reactants and products are in the gas phase, or really just at least some of them are, if the volume of the system, the volume of the container that we hold our reactants and products in, okay, if the volume of that somehow decreases, so maybe you establish equilibrium in a syringe and then you depress the plunger and you decrease the volume, okay, so if the volume of the system decreases, the container decreases, the equilibrium is going to shift towards the side with fewer moles of gases in the balanced chemical equation. So you look at the balanced chemical equation, you pick which side has fewer moles of gases, that's the direction we're going to have a shift upon our volume decrease. Now if the opposite thing occurs, if the volume of our reaction system increases, the container increases in volume, the equilibrium is going to shift towards the side with more moles of gases. Okay. Likewise, there's some rules down here at the end, F and G. This deals with whether or not the reaction is exothermic or endothermic, okay? And how in changing the temperature will change the situation. For a reaction with this, which is exothermic, now exothermic reactions, those are the ones that you mix the reactants, they produce the products, and they, they also produce heat as a product, right? So the, the system would warm up, it would feel warm to our touch in an exothermic reaction. Like fire is an example of an exothermic reaction, right? There's lots of different exothermic reactions, but you get the idea, it produces heat. For those types of reactions, rule F tells us that increasing the temperature of the reaction system actually shifts the system back to the left towards the reactants. So increasing the temperature shifts the system back to the left, shifts, shifts the equilibrium back to the left. And this is only true of the exothermic reactions. Okay? It's also going to make our K value smaller generally as well. The you know, equilibrium constant, remember, it's temperature specific. If you change temperature, you change the value of K. In this case, if you have an exothermic reaction, if you, if you increase the temperature, it's going to make K smaller with the shift back to the left towards the reactants. Rule G tells us that if we have an endothermic reaction, now this is the opposite. This is where you mix our reactants and they absorb heat from the surroundings to, to, to make products. So the reaction system might get kind of cold as a result. So this is for endothermic reactions. If you increase the temperature, that's going to shift our equilibrium towards the right, towards the products, okay? So in this case right here, if I increase my temperature for an endothermic reaction, that's going to make my K value larger. It's going to make K bigger. It's going to increase my equilibrium constant as well, okay? And last thing is not last, lastly, but not least, there's one more rule that I had to write at the top here because I ran out of space on my whiteboard. I apologize for that. But rule number H, okay, or letter H. Sometimes people are interested in how catalysts affect equilibrium position. It turns out they don't. Catalysts may lower activation energy and speed up reactions, but they don't affect an equilibrium position. So they have no effect on the shift. 